Thomas Frank is an author, YouTuber, and creator of the College Info Geek website, which is an immense collection of resources that anyone can use to improve their lives. He went from being obsessed by tech at a very young age, teaching himself how to build a website when he was 12 years old, to transforming his passion for learning into one of the best love resources for students. Need motivation? That's a top 10 video with Believe Nation. Top 10, top I got a top, top 10. 10. Top got my motivation high for my top, top 10. 10. Top Gotta 10. learn from the wise women and men. men. All my life, like nine to the nine. Hey, it's Evan Carmichael, and you are probably the most ambitious person in your circle, but you know you're capable of more, and you get that push by surrounding yourself with the best. So today, let's learn from one of the best, Thomas Frank, and my take on his top 10 rules for success. Enjoy. Okay, let's kick it off with rule number one, start small. What's a tip that you might have for somebody who's trying to be more productive? Where do you even start with that, really? Uh, I think the biggest thing is to start small. So one of the... One of my favorite lessons I learned early on in college came from this book called The Motivation Hacker by this guy. He's a quantified self dude out in California and he tried to do all these crazy habits all at once and kind of documented his journey and talked about what he learned. And he had this concept in the book he talked about called success spirals where you have to start very small when you're wanting to build a habit and then you kind of spiral up and you add more difficulty or you add more habits over time mm -hmm. because you're sort of leveling up. And then if you fall off, you need to start small again. You can't start immediately where you were. So what I see in most people who start following me and asking me, you know, how do I become more productive? They want to do all these things all at once. Mm -hmm. Start getting up at five in the morning. They want to start journaling, want to start meditating, start reading, you know, a book a week, all this kind of stuff. And you can't do it immediately. So the biggest thing for me is to find something that speaks to you and start with that and make sure you can get it really solid. So start with one Yep. and then start small. What do you mean by start small? Uh, it could be, so say you wanna start doing pull-ups every day. Start by doing one pull-up a day or start by just making yourself go to the gym and just getting there. That's, you know, that's the accomplishment for you. Yeah. And then start moving forward because a lot of people, they see like a recommended program from a pro online and they'll say, okay, I'm gonna do that every single day because that's what I need to do. But when you haven't spiraled up, like Nick says, you can't stick with that kind of a program unless you're some sort of you know, ridiculous discipline robot. Uh, so you wanna start smaller and then eventually you can stick to that kind of a big program. Rule number two, develop your skills. And there's another thing that people need to realize. Regardless of what a person like me or a person like you is known for being skilled as, maybe um, a podcaster or a YouTuber or an athlete, there's like a meta skill that each of us has, I don't wanna say mastered, but gotten very good at, and that's presenting ourselves very well in mass media. Hmm. That's why our president is somebody who was in the media. And this started, I think, with Ronald Reagan. It's people who know how to, how to use mass media tools to make themselves look very good and to deliver a message. So people at home who haven't practiced that skill look at people like us, assume that they don't see that. They just see that, oh, we're a god of productivity mm -hmm. or a god of podcasting or like the best filmmaker ever or something like that. Rule number three, get rid of, I don't feel like it. What was that first YouTube video that you were like, oh, this is a thing? Uh, so the YouTube was actually pretty interesting. So that was, I guess, what, it was four years of just blogging and podcasting. Mm -hmm. uh, YouTube became a thing because I have friends at a company called Fizzle who make video courses for content creators. Like that's their business basically. Okay. And they also had a blog, which I was a big religious follower of and a podcast. And one day I saw them post a snippet from their video course on productivity as a blog post. Hmm. And they said, hey guys, we're just gonna try doing some video content on the blog as like a sort of way to, to shake things up. And I said, I'm gonna do that. Yeah. That seems like an easy way to get into video just as like a way to make my blog content more diverse. So it wasn't really me trying to become a YouTuber. It was just me making a video for my blog and using YouTube as a hosting service. Hmm. But I liked the process. And so that got me started watching a bunch of YouTubers. And I kind of, I came in at the game reviewer space. So I was following people like John Tron and Peanut huh. Butter Gamer and Cat Icarus, people like them. 
So a lot of my early videos actually look like theirs, but it's just for like productivity hacks. Yeah. And I think it was my, mm. my seventh video that kind of hit it big, got posted to Reddit. And that was like, Reddit. The, oh, I'm a YouTuber now. Wow. What, well, what was the I title? Lean into this. Um, I don't feel like it is a mindset for amateurs. Hmm. And there's a funny story behind that video because I had put myself on a strict once per week video schedule. And I will tell you like how strict it was in a second because there was money on the line. Oh no. And I had planned this big video on the 80-20 principle or the Pareto principle. Uh, but my script was just crap and it was Friday and that was supposed to be posting day. And I'm like, there's no way I can film this video. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I just really don't feel like posting this week. And then I was, that was like the, the light bulb. Cause I was like, wait a minute, just because I don't feel like it doesn't mean I don't have to do it. Like I can mm -hmm. still do it. So I just made a video on that idea. Huh. Just like when you don't feel like it, you, that doesn't limit your choices. Rule number four, use the 20 second rule. Well, there's this book called The Happiness Advantage by a guy named Sean Aker. And it contains one of my favorite principles about habit building, which is uh, what he calls the 20 second rule. Mm -hmm. So the whole idea is if you want to build a good habit, make sure it takes less than 20 seconds to start doing it. So Steve's example is great. Have the violin right in the living room. Every time you pass it, it's just right there. You can pick it up and play it. I do the same thing with my guitar. So I went out and I bought a really nice guitar recently, but it's, it's nice and I live in a dry climate, so I have to keep it in the case uh -huh. all the time with a humidifier. And that makes it kind of a pain to take out and play. So I keep my cheap guitar so I can have it out in the living room all the time. I, I end up playing that guitar probably 75% of the time, but that guitar ensures I play every single day just because it's out. Yep, and that's why I've gotten as good as I have. Also, if you wanna have more confidence, motivation, and self-love, check out my 254 series. They're free. The links to join are in the description below. But I'm interested in your opinion. Let's go around the room. It's too late. The skill to hold your opinions to yourself until everyone has spoken does two things. Always pushing yourself forward, always demanding more, and seeing the beauty in what you can become and knowing that even today, as a caterpillar with nothing. Two years before, it kind of started getting big when yeah. cereal came out and everyone else started to do them. Rule number five, find your drive. Does it also, in a way, light a fire under your ass to be like, I am, my existence day to day is very mundane and I'm not being challenged. This is the life I don't want. And mm. in a way, does it motivate you? Or is there a potential to get stuck even further and just be reliant on that income? I'm not sure. I think both can happen depending on the kind of person you are. And I would have to say, honestly, my negative experience in the internship, that didn't light the fire under my ass to make me work harder. What did was the concurrent success of the blog because I went into that internship during the same summer where that life hacker thing happened, I think. I could be wrong about that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm getting my timeline screwed up. Yeah. Oh no, I was actually a year. No, no, yeah, you're right. It was, it was life hacker thing happened. I went into my internship and nights and weekends I was blogging and trying to build this thing up. So I'm at work every single day, hating it, but then I'm coming home every single day building this thing. And the internship ended and it wasn't like, oh, I don't want to go back to that life. It was more, I was just so excited about what was growing over here. Rule number six, keep a journal. I got done with that internship and it kind of coincided with my blog sort of, I don't know if blowing up is the word, but yeah. becoming a thing that I thought I could actually so that was turn your into. It was my point where it's yeah. like, I hate doing this. And I'm very glad that I kept a journal during this time hmm. because now as an entrepreneur, sometimes when it gets hard, you start to think hmm. the grass is greener. It would be so much easier if I went back and uh, hmm. just had a full-time job where I don't have to think about work I at night. I was thinking about that today. Uh -huh. So I go back and I read my journal entries and it just straight up says like, I feel like I'm in prison hmm. and I don't want to like put out there like anybody working a full-time job as a, you know, corporate slave or something like yeah. that. I'm not one of those people, but for me, it felt like that. Uh, and it's interesting when you look back on things, you don't remember all like the bad or boring parts. You kind of look through rose tinted glasses and you mm -hmm. start thinking, well, that might actually be better than what I'm dealing with now. Uh, so keeping a journal was very helpful. Rule number seven, follow a Netflix rule. Is there like an expectation versus reality with uh, any kind of online persona or quote unquote influencer where people see some, they might see a video from you where you're breaking down five tips to help you with your productivity 
and then they automatically assume that you are a productivity <laughs> god and that your life is perfect. And you, there's this like kind of weird ex- expectation versus reality. Right? Oh, I guarantee you a lot of people think I'm a productivity god. But uh, <laughs> my girlfriend sitting in the room over there, she yeah. knows that I'm not. So I actually do make an effort to to show my flaws on social media. Like I will show myself failing at an athletic thing on Instagram sometimes. Or I remember one time I posted just me trying to get this one lick right 50 times and it just sounds horrible. But I wanted to show people like, you're looking at my highlight reel and you're looking at a meticulously crafted script most of the time. Mm -hmm. And every single week I'm giving you guys a new productivity tip. I could not physically do all of these things. And I definitely don't, I'm an imperfect person. And when it comes to that expectation versus reality thing, uh, I think that can also lead to uh, fear when you're meeting someone like that. So I live by something that I like to call the Netflix rule. And this is basically an assumption in my head that whether it's Arnold Schwarzenegger or Gary Vaynerchuk or Oprah Winfrey, these people as successful as they are and as self-disciplined as they are most of the time are probably going to go home tonight at some point, kick off their shoes and watch Netflix because they're tired. And maybe they're going to order a pizza because it's been uh, a long tour and they're just very stressed. And hey, I do those things too, which means that we're alike in at least one way. And that means that we're not completely separate beings. So there is some degree to which we can connect. Mm. And that just kills that intimidation factor. Rule number eight, figure out what you want to do. I went to Iowa State University and I majored in MIS. So that's management information systems. Basically take a little bit of business, take a little bit of IT with a lot less math, throw it together, you get a major. So I went into college wanting to be that guy who sits in the basement of a huge corporation with all like the matrix computer screens around me. Yeah, that's what I thought would be interesting to do. Hmm. Uh, And then I did it and I hated it. (laughs) You actually need some light. Well, so yeah, I thought that was interesting from a conceptual standpoint, but as I got into college and did uh, several part-time jobs, I started to realize I want a job where I can be active as well. Like I don't want to be a cubicle monkey. Mm -hmm. So, I started kind of narrowing my focus toward networking because I figured networking would be building networks. Um, And I've since learned that that's like that's like its own discipline. But what I ended up doing in my internship was cubicle monkey work. Really? Yep. Uh, I think my job was basically just to change firewall settings. And I had to write up a document that every single time. Boring. It was pretty bad. You had to get open word, write exactly what you were going to do, send it through three different levels of approval, and then do it. Oh so it was pretty bad. And that was like the entire job. And that taught me, number one, I already knew I didn't want to be a cubicle monkey. But number two, it actually taught me that I'm not built for maintenance work. Hmm. I'm built for creative work. I would imagine that you are the same. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you figured that out after yeah. college? I f- well, no, that was my internship after my sophomore year. Gotcha. So luckily I did not have to go into the real world and get a full, full-time job. Right. It was full-time for three months. Dang. But that That's was interesting. Good. Like, you don't know what you want to do mm-hmm. until you go out and do some things that you don't like. Rule number nine, give. I think the philosophy is what you've been talking about for years. Give, give, give. You know, always be trying to give mm-hmm. and try to give people as much as possible on the platform. Don't, don't be so concerned with getting people back to the thing you created because what you really wanna do is become a known quantity in that community. And rule number 10, the last one before a very special bonus clip is build discipline. In book five of meditations, Aurelius writes, at dawn, when you have trouble getting out of bed, tell yourself, I have to go to work as a human being. What do I have to complain of if I'm going to do what I was born for, the things I was brought into the world to do? Or is this what I was created for? To huddle under the blankets and stay warm? But it's nicer here. So you were born to feel nice instead of doing things and experiencing them? Don't you see the plants, the birds, the ants and spiders and bees going about their individual tasks, putting the world in order as best they can? And you're not willing to do your job as a human being? Why aren't you running to do what your nature demands? But we have to sleep sometime. Agreed, but nature set a limit on that, as it did on eating and drinking. And you're over that limit. You've had more than enough of that, but not of working. There, you're still below your quota. You don't love yourself enough, or you'd love your nature too and what it demands of you. People who love what they do wear themselves down doing it. They even forget to wash or eat. 
Do you have less respect for your own nature than the engraver does for engraving, the dancer for dance, the miser for money, or the social climber for status? When they're really possessed by what they do, they'd rather stop eating and sleeping than give up practicing their arts. He's telling you to respect your choice of path in life enough that you consider it to be your very nature, to be instinct. Just as spiders and bees and ants get up every day and are driven by their instincts, so should you be driven by the actions that are demanded by your goals. If yesterday you decided you wanted to get up early so you could work on your goals, but now you're lying in bed and you feel all comfortable and you don't want to get up, then you need to focus your mind on your nature, on the path you've chosen, and let that override your current desire. Other aspects of the art of gaining self-discipline, like exercises for building grit or systems that commit you to things ahead of time, are important, but they take a back step to this one key insight. For Marcus Aurelius, respecting your work as your very nature and tailoring your decisions and actions in accordance with that was the most important part of building discipline. Now I've got a special bonus gift from Thomas on how to make the most out of books that I think you're gonna enjoy. But before that, it's time for the question of the day. I wanna know where do you need more discipline in your life? Let me know, put it down in the comments below. And if you're still here watching and you promise, you commit, let's go Believe Nation. We don't just watch videos here, we do something about it. If you are gonna commit to taking action today, give me a hashtag believe in the comments below. I want to celebrate you. I also think it's, it's not healthy to be overly concerned though with the best books because Number one, you're basically relying on other people's opinions. But number two, a book may not be amazing for some people, but it might, because of your particular circumstances or your particular goals, it might send you along a path that ends up being very rewarding for you. Uh -huh. And that might not have happened for somebody else. Uh, and like we were talking about earlier, don't finish bad books. You know, If you find out that the book you chose is really not worth it, then put it down. Your time is worth more than the It's hard to put down bucks. a book though, because once you start it, you kind of feel like you have to finish it. Yeah, I think we believe that because we see all these people on the internet who say they read a book a week, or they got this Goodreads profile with a thousand finished books, uh -huh. or you know we've been taught to finish what we start, but the end goal of a book isn't to turn the last page. I mean, that really doesn't do anything for you. The end goal of the book is to get something out of it or to enjoy the process of reading it. So if a book is doing neither of those things for you, um, you know, barring the whole advice to stick things out, you know, because they may be worth it in the long run, mm -hmm. if something is just not worth your time, then it's not worth Why your time. Why do it, right? Yeah. So let's say you grab a book that is useful for you. How do you make sure you apply what you actually read in that book instead of just what most people do is they close it and then they move on to the next book? Yeah. Um, Number one, it's good to take notes or summarize. So my favorite way of taking notes is to sort of read the chapter and then either jot down notes in a bullet list or just a summary into Evernote. So you don't write notes as you're reading? Nope. Uh -huh. I, uh, I, because I find that it just slows down my reading process. So with some books, I'll use like those book flags or highlighter and maybe highlight certain sections or make a mark in the margin, but I don't like to pause and take notes, I like to kind of immerse myself. That makes sense. The other thing is I also listen to a lot of audiobooks. Um, a huge uh, commitment of mine is to have a lot of physical activity, so when some days I can't sit down to read, but I always listen to an audiobook. So I'll either summarize or with Audible you can pause and you can put a note in the app, which is kind of nice. That's and nice. then I think it's, again, it comes down to starting small, selecting something from the book that speaks to you more than everything else and trying to implement that. If you want to see another awesome top 10 rules of success, check out the video right there next to me. I think you'll enjoy it. Continue to believe and I'll see you there. The first step was to ask questions and to look inward and to say, why am I unhappy? What do I actually want? What should I be doing with my life?